Seven will go. Nine will stay. There is no margin of error. Who will emerge from the shadows? Who will seize the Olympic dream? The Olympic trials is a journey. And for Jenny Thompson, it began long ago. She has struggled, she has fought, and here and now, she must prove herself. Christy Powell, she told her coaches she wanted her braces off in time to smile like a champion at the Olympic trials. Will she get the same opportunity in Atlanta? of Amy Chow. Just three weeks ago, she was too hurt to continue at U.S. Nationals. Today, this classical pianist will play for keeps on the gym floor. Will someone like Teresa Kulikowski make the trials a coming out party? themselves into opportunity. One at a time, they will grab hold of a chance for which they have trained forever. One chance to spin a dream into reality. Ranked number one, Shannon Miller, injured and waiting to see if her score will hold up. So too for Dominique Mociano. Now she can only heal and wait. to Boston, Massachusetts, a city that has hosted many historic sporting events. We are here for the Olympic trials for women's gymnastics. We're in the Fleet Center, which has replaced the legendary Boston Garden as the home of the Celtics and the Boston Bruins. I'm John Tesh, along with Tim Daggett, Elfie Schlegel, and Beth Ruyak. And we are here at the Olympic trials to begin with the compulsories for women. These particular exercises count 60%, and the optionals will count 40%. What's important to note here is that only the top seven will advance to the U.S. Olympic team. Dominique Mochianu, with her dad in the stands, she's been petitioned into the Olympic trials using her score from the national championships. Mochianu with an X-ray and MRI confirmed stress fracture of her leg. Since she finished third at nationals, it is expected her score will keep her in the top seven. Also petitioned in from nationals, Shannon Miller. She has severe tendonitis in her left wrist. Now, if Shannon and Dominique scores from Nationals keep them in the top seven, they will, in fact, be going to Atlanta. Jenny Thompson, and always the voice of Steve That's Nuno coaching her on. And according to Steve Nuno, he predicted before these trials that Jenny Thompson would win the Olympic trials. He says she's a better athlete than she was at the national championships, but I'm sure he did not anticipate a fall on the same routine that gave her so many problems at the national championships. This was just earlier today. And just a couple inches away, but a couple inches is a huge disaster. And a look of disbelief in replay from her training partner, Shannon Miller. Christy Powell had a tremendous performance on vault that put her in sixth place, but then her bars routine. Watch Almost this. a domino effect right here. So much tension out on the floor. Just a little bit off. Timing is so critical. If you make the smallest mistake, you're off the bars. That turned out to be a huge mistake that gave her an 8.975 and marked her way down. A world team member who does not have the marquee name value of a Shannon Miller or Dominique Mociano, but nonetheless who is 
pretty amazing performer is Amy Chow. She was hurt right after compulsories and nationals, but she really performed well here today on the same piece of apparatus that has claimed a couple of others. And this is an event that Amy Chow excels at and highlighted by an incredible dismount, a move she was only able to practice twice this week. And so the 18-year-old who will attend Stanford University this fall has established herself already at the trials as one to watch. Another one to watch. Amanda Borden finds herself in a struggle to get out of eighth place. And you know, everybody fully expects Shannon Miller and Dominique Mosciano's scores to carry here. So you have to remember, we don't have seven spots open. We have five. The top five from this competition go on to the Olympic Games. Which brings us to the scores. After two rotations, Dawes, Chow, Phelps, Strug, Kulikowski. Those are the five. If Miller's and Mochiano's scores hold up, who will be going? So you see the no-go zone beyond that. Borden in eighth, Maloney in ninth, and then on down through the 14th. So these athletes, all of them, are going to be trying to get into that top five as we take a look at Christy Powell, who is preparing for her floor exercise. And she has a long climb back up that mountain. The climb out at this point would be out of 12th position. Each athlete will be performing the exact same routine, same music. The choreography has to be exactly the same. The judges will be comparing that. These routines are so precision oriented. There is every element and arm placement has to be performed according to the textbook. The difference in these routines, John, will see expression, more flexibility from some athletes, higher tumbling, more powerful tumbling. Those are the athletes that will get the bigger scores. And we'll see a lot of athletes who really excel in the dance or the choreography. And we'll see some powerful tumblers as well. The big scores, the highest scores, will be the athletes that combine those two, the tumbling and the choreography. Forest, Illinois, who trains with Tom and Lori Forster. Well, Christy is breathing easier. She did a terrific job, a nice balance between the tumbling, the choreography. That's what the judges are looking for. It's going to move her up a little bit. And a nice comeback after that 8.9 on the uneven bars with her fall. Amy Chow is coming up on balance beam, still working out her back. She's had a lot of problem with that. We saw that in nationals as well. Waiting for the score for Christy Powell and a 9.637. Good score, but not great. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Amy Chow is a scholar and a musician. She graduated from high school this spring with a perfect 4.0. And as you see her mom, Susan, recording this for posterity. She's also an accomplished pianist and has taken lessons for 11 years, earning an advanced level certificate of merit, trying to earn her certificate to the Olympic Games here today. Interesting to note that the, there are different countries that are involved in making up the compulsory exercises. The balance beam, for instance, was composed by the Ukraine, and more specifically, Ludmila Turisheva choreographed this exercise. Again, the compulsories count 60% of the total score. The optionals, also this weekend, will count 40. And although these moves look nowhere near as difficult as what you'll see in optional competition, actually, beam compulsory often claims more athletes. We saw that with the men as well, Tim. The men in the pommel horse, the women, it's balance beam and uneven bars. And in fact, there are more elements in this compulsory routine than ever before. There are actually 18 moves that have specific deductions. So once you finish with one element, there's another one to worry about. So far, this is pretty good, though.
just the dismount. Amy Chow, and boy, is she having a great meet so far. Fantastic competition. Of course, Amy is more noted for her optional beam routine. She's a trickster, but she has really done a great job in this event that demands so much precision. Her mom loves it. Already a 9-8 and a 9-7 on vault and on even bars. So she has turned in the scores that has kept her up in second position. The thing she does so well is everything looks so easy, completely effortless. Beautiful front with a half. And she lands, and it looks like it's no problem at all. Amy score a 9-6-3-7, so another her top three scores are quite incredible. J.C. Phelps is next on floor exercise. Again, you'll hear that same music that we heard with Christy Powell. You'll be able to compare the two routines. She almost won the national championship a few weeks back. And actually, this is where she shines. Compulsory exercises are her strength. Textbook perfect. She will really excel in this routine and take advantage of the flexibility that is demanded. She gave Shannon Miller a scare at Nationals, didn't she? gym and you're watching a workout you hear this floor music for about six hours straight <laughs> every day well you won't have to hear it much longer Tim because after this summer there will be no more compulsories to the arms of Mary Lee Tracy, her coach. Not a whole lot wrong with that floor routine. As I said, she performs it to Tex. It was beautiful. In third position after the second rotation. She, as I mentioned, almost won that U.S. national title this year. She finished only .05, five one hundredths of a point behind Shannon Miller, the closest margin of victory in the U.S. championships. Here's Teresa Kulikowski. Our coaches, Tom and Lori Forster. <laughs> Lori's going to hate this picture. Only they know what they're trying to say to her. Just wake up, big eyes and chin up, and go perform that routine. Don't just do it, perform it. to compare these floor exercise routines. I think what you'll see from Teresa is she will go out there and sell the routine. What I mean by that is she'll be explosive in her tumbling and she will carry her upper body and her head movements to the fullest. If you were listening and watching the men's competition, you know that there are two battles that go on. One is the battle for the top bragging rights to who won the Olympic trials. And the other is to get out of the no-go zone Right now, Teresa in fifth position with Shannon Miller and Dominique Mochianu petitioned in, would be going, but it's a tenuous position.
know, people at home are watching this exercise thinking, you know, the tumbling looks pretty easy. I can't see what's going on here. But believe me, it can be as exhausting as an optional floor routine. Every arm placement is accounted for. It's tiring. We need that endurance for this dismount right here. Big repulsion. Teresa Kulikowski, what do you think? Great exercise. I mean, she really danced her heart out. The, the tumbling was right on. I don't know that it will get an extremely big score, but I think she'll be very consistent. 9-7 in vaults and a 9-5 in uneven bars. That's kept her up there. Good job, guys. As you said, John, she is in that last spot right now in the fifth position. J.C. Phelps, floor exercise score a 9.837. It keeps her up in the top five. Kulikowski is a 9.637, so her second highest score so far of the meet. As we switch you to Dominique Dawes, who is preparing for her balance beam routine. We'll take a break. We'll be right back with that. In first position after the second rotation, 19-year-old Dominique Dawes, who is a crowd favorite here. It was interesting talking to some of the other coaches prior to this competition and hearing their predictions. Many of them felt that the veterans would rise to the occasion, and she has done just that. She's Night and day from national championships. And she has competed in five world championships. We saw her falling on almost every piece of apparatus and in tears during compulsories at nationals. This is a different woman. She came back in Dominique Dawes fashion and won four individual event medals at that competition. I spoke with her coach Kelly Hill before the meet and she said Dominique finally thinks that she's ready to do these compulsory exercises. She said it only took her four years to be comfortable with them. Her score on the vault on the 9.862 was the highest, is the highest of the meet so far. Very important combination here. They have to keep the rhythm moving between these elements. Slight pauses can amount to as much as, as a 0.1 deduction. trials but it's a different performer it is a different performer but you know there were some slight hesitations it's not going to be an outrageously high score she had a few hesitations but you know this is a routine that you really want to get done with compulsory beam especially when you've been struggling in the compulsory exercises she's happy here's someone who is struggling right now to try and make the top seven always talking to herself is Amanda Borden always imaging She was so close to making the team in 1992. Missed it by one place. A total unknown back then. Now she's been around and in the thick of things ever since. Too, which is tall for a gymnast. But it also works on the floor exercise, doesn't it? Well, so far, this routine is certainly going to help Amanda's cause of climbing her way back into that top five. Once again, endurance is the factor here to show a lot of power. Yeah. 
Amanda Borden. She put it all together when she had to. This was an excellent, excellent exercise. She worked hard, and it's going to reflect in the score. As I said, it was playful. The tumbling was strong. She had a wonderful expression on her face throughout the entire routine. I really enjoyed the routine. It was drawn into it. Here's one of the tumbling runs. Has to kick out to vertical, which she did. Lots of height, lots of bounce out of tumbling pass, and then you've got to finish right on the beat. With a big smile, too. She's hoping for a better score than she got on an even bars with a 9.262. Oh, she's going to get that, John. There we go, a 9.812, so a terrific score for her. Remember, we just saw Kulikowski get a 9.637. She's in that tricky fifth place spot. There's Dominique Dawes' score from balance beam, 9.637. That still keeps her up top. Remember, she was in first position after the second rotation. Here's a young lady who is struggling. Jenny Thompson, after two rotations, she was in 13th place. She has to be perfect through the rest of compulsories and optionals for a chance to make it to Atlanta. And John, the compulsories have been a real challenge for Jenny Thompson, although I have really seen her mature in the last couple of years. She's worked so hard, in, particularly in the dance area of this exercise. Pacing up in the top of the stands. Better tuck on the last one. All right, there, little guy. All right, how to go? How to go? A little bent leg on that towards your tail. You know, it's a little, little, little loose with your back leg. You know. Probably. But otherwise, good, good extension in the splits. Probably right. more attention than Jenny's <laughs> ever gotten from Steve and Shannon's in the stands. Always correcting, always making those little nitpicky comments, but for her benefit, obviously. There's Dominique and her dad, Dimitri. Looking over the scores, I'm sure trying to find out if her score from Nationals is going to hold up since she was petitioned into the trials. It must be tough to watch from the stands knowing that you could probably win this thing. Her exercise on floor, 9.625 for Jenny Thompson, so a good score for her. That's a great score for Jenny Thompson, great score. The standings after three rotations, J.C. Phelps in first, Dominique Dawes down there in the no-go zone, Teresa Kulikowski and Amanda Borden fighting for that last position as you look at the rest of the top 14. And now we have learned that Shannon Miller does in fact qualify for the U.S. Olympic team based on those scores after three rotations. Shannon is going. We do not know yet about Dominique. We'll take a break. We'll be right back with more gymnastics in a moment. They lead. They encourage. The floor exercise is next. After three rotations, Amy finds herself in third position. She dropped down one place. And we have also learned, as I mentioned earlier, that Shannon Miller has taken one of those positions in the top seven away. So Miller is going for sure. Which means if everybody got tens through compulsories and optionals, that Shannon would still end up in the top seven. So it's mathematically impossible that she would be denied a berth on the Olympic team.
this is an athlete that a lot of people are very, very high on. One of the national team coaches, Arthur Kopian, a former great Soviet gymnast, feels that she does some of the elements better than anybody in the world. that Amy has a very easy time showing off in this routine or the flexibility movements. She can take certainly full advantage of, of those skills, but she really has to work a lot more on the expression in the choreography. I really believe she can score much bigger if she can take more, uh, more of an advantage in that department. Yeah, we saw Amanda in every little element is shown to its fullest, the, the head goes back, the chest is, is up and presenting at all times. Amy really needs to work on that. Amy Chow. And another near flawless performance from her. She's been very consistent across the board. As I said, this is potentially the lowest scoring compulsory event for Amy, but I'm sure she'll be working very hard in the weeks ahead. Well, prior to this, she's had no score under a 9-6 as we watch the replay. As I said, the tumbling is really very easy for Amy Chow. Just wait to see her optional routine. This is one of the required tumbling passes, of course, the front through to the full twist, lots of height, completion of a complete full twist, and she must rebound following that element. She also must be in a good deal of pain because she's had a back injury that she's been suffering with, a 9487, so her lowest score so far in the meet. As we switch you to Teresa Kulikowski, she is right in that dangerous no-go zone with the beam facing her. And her coach, Tom Forrester, really believes that with her style, this potentially is one of the best routines in the world when she's on. But right now in fifth place. With Shannon already petitioned in, that puts her in sixth place, effectively. Oh! oh. That is gigantic. A fall from the beam. Five tenths, mandatory deduction. You know, we talked about the exact elements, and on that particular jump right there, she dropped her leg. Little deductions that are adding up. She trains at the Colorado Aerials with Tom and Lori Forrester just about a year and a half ago at people were saying that the Foresters could have as many as four potential Olympians with Christy Powell's problems and now this fall here. Tom has made no secret about the fact that it is his dream to have an athlete go to the Olympic Games. And another good point is that Tom was saying that these girls have not had other Olympians in their gym, aside from Carrie Strug. They have not had other athletes in the gym who could help us help them with the experience and what to expect at Olympic trials. Strug was in there only for a while until she switched back to Bella Caroli's gym. Dismount. That's devastating. Tom Forrester. What is he thinking? You watch your athlete make a mistake that they just don't do, and you ask yourselves, what did I do wrong? What could we have done to avoid that? And sometimes there's never an answer. And Teresa Kulikowski is upset, as is her coach. Good work on the end of the return. Let's see what happened. It's a very difficult roll, John. It's a shoulder roll. Obviously, she was well off to the right-hand side and had no chance of saving the move at all. Wow. An 8-9-6-2. And remember, she was in fifth place entering this rotation. That will knock her down. Tom Forster in the body language of a man who was up on the beam himself. You have to wonder if Teresa can see his reaction. It would not bode well for her. 
the official sport. Coke, just for the taste of it. Amanda Borden warming up on beam. She is up next. First, let's go down to Beth Ruyak on the gym floor for a report on an injured Dominique Mochianu. John, she is a world-class athlete who loves to tumble and to leap, and right now she can't do either one. All she can do are simple, basic dance steps. All kinds of healing therapies are being tried, and right now, Dr. Larry Nassar tells me that according to the x-ray, the bone is thickening in the part of her leg that is broken. That's helping the pain a little bit in her leg. It's not yet helping the pain in her heart, as Dominique right now has to sit and wait. It's a matter of time waiting for bone to heal. Waiting and remembering where she'd been. 1995, Dominique's national title came sooner than her coach expected, but Dominique was ready to shine. Two weeks ago, Dominique tried to defend that title, but a sharp pain in her right leg wouldn't go away and it hurt. Only her family and her coaches knew that something was really wrong. They asked me you know, how I was feeling and, you know, it hurt, but what could I do? I had to finish my competition and then afterwards see. I had to bite my teeth somehow and make it through, though it was really bad at first. What hurt was any pressure on her leg, any running, any tumbling, any time she landed. Dominique said she felt like she was competing on one leg. Two days later, we came home, and on the very first dismount, she did collapsed. Collapsed on the ground, which, which I, I didn't know, you know, what how to take it. They said, Domino, you can't do that. Uh, you can hurt yourself if you just let yourself fall. She did not say a word. On the second attempt, she fell just like her, her legs gave up, down on the ground. And I said, stop. No wonder it hurt, a four centimeter stress fracture. Dominique earned a medal in pain. And now in the gym, Bella has to train gently. But the Olympics are only three weeks away and Dominique has big dreams. You know, this is the Olympics you're talking about here. This is a big meet. This is the most important meet of anybody's life. She's still the one who thinks the board is made up from sugar and she's climbing the sugar mountain. And at the top of the sugar mountain, there's uh, gonna be the sunshine. Gosh, I wish all her life would be the same. But I think, and I know, would be a deep scar on her mind and her heart for the rest of her life if this thing would go in the wrong way. Well, here and now today in the gym, she is less the gymnast and more daddy's little girl up there with her dad, Dimitri, but we can tell you that it looks right now that she is going to go to Atlanta, that her scores will hold up. Amanda Borden ready for the beam, and she is trying to climb out of sixth place with Shannon already going, mathematically cinched that she is going. Amanda must improve her performance. John, she should be very comfortable with this routine. Many felt that she had a head start. She was a demonstrator for the U.S., traveled the country demonstrating this routine. So they feel she's the best, and what a save. We saw Teresa Kulikowski fall off on that exact element. Just about any other gymnast in the meet with that role would have been off the beam. Somehow she held on. Experience. In these compulsory exercises, there is always a dreaded skill. I'd have to say the, the shoulder roll is that on the balance beam, just like that free hip hack that caused so many athletes problems on the uneven bars. That was beautiful, though, that sequence right there. Having to show full 180 split. You talk to the athletes prior to the compulsories, and they say this is the part of the whole process that they dread. It counts a full 60%. Nice rhythm throughout that combination. Beautiful split once again that's heavily emphasized throughout this routine. Working high up on the toes. Very nice. Amanda has been moving up steadily since this began. 
A great save and a great landing. She regained her composure after that near miss. It was an awesome routine. Flawless, actually. But that that problem on the roll could be potentially as much as a three-tenth deduction. But watch how she saves the skill. It could have been disastrous, much worse than it actually was. That could be the difference between going to Atlanta and not going. And her score, a 9.487 for Amanda. It was a hefty deduction for that role. So her lowest score of the day is a 9262. And what that does is it ensures Dominique Mociano, I can guarantee you she does not know yet, but she, in fact, qualifies along with Shannon Miller for the 1996 U.S. Olympic team. What that means is there are only five places left. The continuing battle with the best of the rest coming up. The most rewarding relationships are the ones that grow with Plastics trials for women. I'm John Tesh, along with Elfie Schlegel, Tim Daggett, and Beth Ruyak. We're at the Fleet Center watching Jenny Thompson, who is in 10th place after three rotations. The women have the compulsories, which count 60%, the optionals, which count 40%, but she needs to dig herself out of this hole because only the top seven are going. And already, Shannon Miller and Dominique Mochianu have made it mathematically possible for them to go to the games. That means that there are only five positions left. Things did not go well for Jenny Thompson this morning in practice. She had a nervous time on the balance beam during this exercise. Again, it's a routine where you have to show a lot of flexibility. Nice job on the scale. Perfect 180. This is a crucial element. Handstand split. Oh, that was great. She's worked hard. She, of course, started out very rough with that fall from the uneven bars, but has been battling her way back. She's one of the youngest gymnasts here at 14 years old. After the first rotation, she was 10th. The second, she dropped back to 13th. After the third, she bounced back up into 10th. But if she expects to be in that top five, nine fives and nine sixes, I don't think will get the job done. She has been fighting for every element in this routine, just the dismount. It's a nice job. More applause from Shannon Miller. All right. All right. Solid seven. As I mentioned earlier, both ball Shannon ball. and Jenny <laughs> train with this man, but Steve really Nuno. Good routine. Yeah. Nice and if both of them make the team, he may well be one of the Olympic coaches. Beautiful routine after that. All right. Knowing good Steve, landing. I know that he would enjoy that. <laughs> you know, you hear Steve, nice solid set, good landing. Sometimes those comments are meant for more than just Jenny Thompson. I think he knows that the judges are listening, oh, maybe trying to make a point. I didn't know that. Look how hard she's been working on all these elements, trying to show a perfect split, something that the judges are really focusing in on on this balance beam routine. She did a good job. She's lost something. <laughs> There's her score of a 9.525. Good score, but once again, not a great score. She needs 9.6s, nine 9.7s nine to crack that top spot. Just ahead of her entering this rotation, Christy Powell, who had that mishap on the uneven bars that scored her below a 9.0. And you know that is weighing heavily on Christy's mind. This is a tough event. It should go fairly well for Christy. I've seen her do this routine time and time again, extremely well. Again, big elements right off the top. Slight wobble there. A lot of the women are holding their leg up after the cartwheel element. Christy chooses not to. It is not a deduction. Low you know, back leg on that second jump. That can be as much as a one-tenth deduction. They're very, very hard on this routine.
she's not having any major mistakes, but just slight little balance checks and maybe not exact handstand positions or 180 splits. Has to keep this moving. Rhythm very important. Dropped her foot down, that will be a deduction, as well as the loss of rhythm. If you want to compare this to something, the compulsories would be like the figures of old in figure skating and playing your scales every day as a musician. I'm telling you, there are deductions throughout this entire routine, potential deductions. There's a move after the next. Nice job on the dismount. This was a rough go. I have to say, there were so many small breaks in this routine. I think she's going to find a lot of deductions. Which was my next question. Do you think this could help her climb out of that ninth position? I don't think so, John. It, uh, like Elfie said, and was echoed by her coach, Lori Forrester, teeny tiny mistakes just like this split leap. The back leg wasn't horizontal to the beam. She should have shown a more 180 degree split, and that'll be a deduction. Some post-coaching by Tom and Lori Forster, and uh, you're right, Tim and Elfie, a 9.250. That could possibly knock her even further down. Carrie Strug, someone who has been to the Olympic Games before, coached by Bella Caroli, coming up next. Do you think you'll be okay? Honey? Fifth place after three rotations, entering the last rotation, is Carrie Strug. You have seen her before. She is looking to make her second trip to the Olympic Games. Was the youngest member of the team four years ago. A position Dominique Mochianu finds herself in. I think we're in for a great routine. Did you see the way she presented herself to the judges? Carrie is going to sell this exercise. Great first opening tumbling pass. Only five positions left. She is in fourth position at this point. This is the most showmanship I have ever seen from Carrie Strug. This is fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> the voice of Bella Caroli. Wow. Wow. Baby. That was a big one. Oh, my God. That was a big one. Big one. All right. Well, it's not over until after the optionals, of course. That was big. But Carrie Strug served notice there. Wow. Did she come alive in this exercise? You know, we've talked about her maturity, and it certainly showed, especially in the dance. But take a look at the tumbling. Carrie is explosive. She's exciting. Look at that. That was incredibly high. She even carries her body, as we were talking about, much differently than she did four years ago. A 9-8-8-7 on floor exercise for Carrie Strug, which puts her in tremendous position, entering the optional phase of the Olympic trials. Moves her up into third, just behind another lady who had a terrific day today, Dominique Dawes. As we take a look at the rest of the standings, Shanna Miller, Dominique Mociano, look down through seven. If it ended right now, those are the seven athletes that would be going to the Olympics, but we still have optionals.
Jenny Thompson in 10th, Teresa Kulikowski in 9th. Let's go down to the gym floor right now, and Beth Bruyak has Amanda Borden. Beth. Four years ago, you were on your path at this point, and there was a little different outcome. Compare four years ago to now for me. Um, well, I didn't really know what to expect four years ago, and now I know what I need to do, and I know what it takes to, you know, be in the top seven, and I'm going to do everything I can to stay there. Any easier this time? Um, I, I don't think that a competition is ever easier or harder. It just um, depends on, you know, where you are and what you need to do, and I, I just need to stay tough and hang in there. Good luck in the optional. Thank you. And so the first phase of the Olympic trials is complete. The optionals for Dominique Dawes and the rest are next. Carrie Strug looking to make her second trip to the Olympic Games. JC Phelps, her performance today, spot on. She won the compulsories. The Olympic flame, the lure for them all. And tonight at 7 Eastern Live, the decision will be made. Who will go? Who will stay? For Elfie Schlegel, Tim Daggett, and Beth Ruyak, I'm John Tesh. We will see you live tonight.